G'day, welcome to Market Sound After Work. Today I want to do a video, um, as the title says, um, do muzzle brakes cause better accuracy or worse accuracy? Um, and this, the very simple answer to that is, it's not a simple answer. <laughs> um, I certainly have said many times on the channel, I suppose, on the channel I have lots of, a fair few, videos that go through and describe the different levels of mother brakes as to how they work in a basic sense to how they work in a complicated sense and all the things that are involved. Um, the other thing I've said multiple times I find my rifles and my setup works better with my muzzle brake. It's more accurate with my muzzle brakes. But that is not a general rule whatsoever. I've also gone through some of the problems that some muzzle brakes can cause. But this video, I just want to nutshell it for people to understand a little bit better in something that's actually very complicated and still, to my surprise, has done poorly in some places in the market um, and in other places it's done very well. And uh, not a sales video, what my muzzle brakes work in their own way, but I want to go through and explain basically what's going on. To start off with, the muzzle brakes um, and the, the ways that, yes, they do, can change the accuracy of a rifle. Um, not always, but they can change it. There's, there's, a, there's, I suppose, a few different ways it can affect things. To start off with, in the actual effect of the, the bullet coming out of the muzzle, they are disturbing with the air at that place. So that can have a positive and can have a negative and can have no effect at all. But that's so the air coming out and as the projectile travels off into the air. The next side of things is the muzzle brakes, depend how they're designed, can affect what the tip of the barrel or what the muzzle on the barrel actually does. They can make it move and they can make the rifle move in different fashions as well because they're dealing with the air that's coming out in front of the projectile where they first start to actually make the um, projectile operate, that air in front of the projectile is pushing at the same thousands of feet per second or thousands of kilometers an hour hit against there. So there's a tiny movement in the um, muzzle end of the rifle or the whole rifle, depending on how that's work, uh, prior to the bullet releasing, so that can affect things. And the last bit that really does change things is the confidence of the shooter. That is something that can affect things as well. If you're more comfortable, um, or you're less comfortable, um, and muzzle brakes can do both. They can do things in the fashion of by avoiding the pain of the of the recoil on a very aggressively recoiling rifle, or someone who's timid about the recoil in the rifle, then a muzzle brake can give them more confidence and make them more relaxed behind the trigger. So that can help in the positive side of things. Some of the most efficient muzzle brakes that push a lot of gas straight backwards, and to some places will end up with percussion hitting us, not just the gas I'm talking about, it's actually percussion hitting in the face. So the shock, the, the shock wave that comes out of a muzzle brake, if that is able to get to the shooter's face, then that can cause the opposite. That causes less confidence. So once again, in less confidence, you'll tend to find less accuracy. So those are the three major ways that you can talk about a muzzle brake affecting things. Okay, so let's count back up those three. Um, the Basically, the more or less confidence created by what the muzzle brake does in reference to it's either recoil retardation or the percussion it puts in your face. Um, this is, well, listen, I suppose it's a little bit of a design thing. Um, the, the more efficient way to get a muzzle brake to work, well, there's two ways that they work. One is by more area for the gas that's actually pushing, coming out of the barrel to push against, to push the muzzle forward, or the muzzle brake forward, which obviously attaches the rifle and pulls the whole rifle forward, which fights the recoil. Um, you can do that by having more area for the gas to hit against. Um, the secondary side of things, if you take that from just being a hit here to when the gas comes out and releases, if it's pushing back as well, so like a, almost like a jet pushing backwards, um, it's actually the design of how that gas is coming out rather than the gas coming backwards is the fact it's been made to go back, which means there's a secondary um, uh, amount of energy that's pushing the rifle forward. So that sounds good uh, until you get to the fact that in some cases, that's much more prone to ending up where percussion is coming back against your face. So 
there's a balance and in some places it's worked out very well people aren't aware of the situation go with what's the most efficient muzzle brake what's the most efficient what gives the most retardation that's got to be the best one well when it turns into percussion in your face it becomes not the best one because in actual fact that percussion becomes the same thing you're worried about so the balance um, of the more ports to be able to do that or merrier, more area to do that becomes a balance between things. But my comment would be muzzle brakes that are designed well are designed to create, it's not about the most efficient and the most, most um, braking energy they can create, it's the most comfortable to shoot with. So the simple bit that goes in that is generally a, a straight port rather than an angle port will tend to be less likely to do that. When you have straight sides is better than if you're looking forward at the rifle. If you have straight sides like this, listen, that's not terrible. If, if they're angled out like this at all, you see that sort of wedge style that ends up here, then those ports are exposed to putting percussion on your face. Straight and wider, ends up where it actually puts more and more of the gas going sideways, which is what my brake is designed like, which pushes more to the side. So it becomes a lot more comfortable on the face. Um, there is more nuances to it than just that, but there's something to be aware of. And that's part of where either one of those going too far um, or, or over braking can cause that sort of problem. <laughs> but there's more of a balance to that side of things and really going to where it's, there's still recoil there, but it's not too aggressive, but there's no percussion in your face is the ideal, ideal place to end up with. Uh, and going too far, particularly in the, in the angle back and, the, and especially in the wedge when it's starting to punch you in the face with stuff, yeah, that, that's not ideal at all. And that will definitely cause inaccuracy for the average shooter. Um, the next step back up in a similar thing in the design side of it, or in the, in the, in the design, definitely much of the port, of the, how the ports work, is that there's a fair few mark, um, muzzle brakes on the market designed to deliberately fight muzzle rise. There's other things that cause as well, but muzzle jump, muzzle rise. So what they do is, I think one of these, uh, this one here has little ports on the top. Um, this has open ports on the top and closed ports on the bottom. Um, there is various ranges where, where you'll see, if you look at the side of the muzzle brake, if you look, this is a nice simple side of muzzle brake, when the ports are angled um, forward, you see some of them are all angled forward. Um, that What that's going to cause in all those forms is it causes the gas to be able to escape upwards or the design of the muzzle brake means that there's, it's creating the gas to go upwards, which means it's designed the brake to go down. Now that can, in offhand shooting, in a situation like that, can sort of help with without muzzle brise, the gas is pushing it back down. The same as a compensator on a handgun designed to push it back down. So rather than it going up, the compensator on there is designed to, as you shoot it, the gas is designed to, and that's for guys who know about that sort of stuff, they'll set up their powder charge to work where you get the flattest driving of the muzzle brake versus the recoil or the compensator versus the recoil to end up with it shooting flat. The thing is in the fine detail of precision shooting that as I've said a few times now there's a charge of gas coming out at the beginning of things and that means that the muzzle brake is already starting to move in the direction of that design prior to the bullet releasing which simply means that can still be accurate, but it becomes less consistent because there's a little movement happening and then gas recoil, all the bits and pieces form, all start to affect things more. So in some places that can still help with the right consistency in that side of things. But I've tended to find, and one of the things I definitely see is the less um, messing with the rifle apart from just recoil retardation the less messing with it, the more accuracy you'll tend to find out of that so that's once again a design feature in muzzle brakes that can go in various different forms but getting that flat action is not about stopping the, 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 the muzzle rise is much more about just stopping the recoil and you set up your rifle to deal with the muzzle rise and all those other bits and pieces so the last bit back up that path, and the, really what I was, the, the, the bit that's probably the most relevant thing to talk about this, and that's coming back to the air that releases from the barrel before and just after the projectile release. Um, by now, well, there's certainly enough videos out there and things to see it, but I'll put another one up here so you can see that. 
as a projectile releases from the um, crown of your rifle, from the muzzle of your rifle, as it goes out there, there's a little bit of gas in front of it um, for a couple of reasons. Um, it's not just the gas in front of the barrel. There's also when a projectile, is, when, a, when a cartridge um, goes off, when it fires, it gets pushed the, the projectile forward. But at that instant, as it's coming out, there's gas sneaking out around that projectile. And it actually goes around and gets in front of the projectile. Very, very fast stuff, the gas, doing sometimes in the vicinity of, I don't know the mathematics on it, but probably in the vicinity of 10 times the speed of the projectile. So in that expanding gas of the, of the gas um, burning, um, there's the, the process of, of combustion in your, in your combustion chamber, the, um, the, or in your round, uh, that's a mechanical term, sorry. The, um, so in your, of the, the firing or the cartridge going off, some gas gets around the front of it of the projectile to start off with, and you'll see that in a little bit of gas releasing first. Then the main charge happens and the gas expands behind it, pushes the projectile out super high speed. So what's coming out in front of the projectile is the full barrel of air plus a certain amount of gas that's got around it, and that will change to all sorts of, of details of jump and of um, case uh, neck tension and of the projectile sealing to the lands and all sorts of stuff. A certain amount of stuff gets around um, and that's what's coming out in front. So that is off into whatever's happening up the front of things, affecting muzzle brakes and that side of things. But then there comes into the extra detail is that as the projectile releases from the crown of the rifle or right from the, the tip of the muzzle or the, the tip of the bore, um, the gas is that fast that as it releases, there is gas shooting up and getting, goes around in front of the projectile. So it comes out and goes in front of the projectile. That can cause a disturbance, especially if that's super high speed gas, even though there's only a little bit of it, if it's pushing from one area more than another on the front of the projectile, that can affect accuracy. Now this is something that I discuss in bullet shapes and that side of things, but that comes into where especially when you have a boat tail and the longer the boat tail the bigger the effect this is because as that boat tail releases from the bore of the rifle the gas is being jetted out and like I said coming out and a certain amount of it coming back into the path of the projectile so <laughs> then that can cause a disturbance that's where target projectiles which tend to be flat based so your normal mid to short to mid range target projectile of even your very fast caliber rifles tends to be a flat base and that's because that turns it into where the gas has a lot less tendency the bullet has almost well has to be completely released by the time that flat base gets past the crown um, and what that means or past the the tip of the bore once it gets that point there the bullet has already got further out before the gas can affect it so it means the gas affects it less so that's why a boat tail projectile is, tends to be less accurate in that pre extreme precision in that lower area. Now, without getting too much complicated about bullet shapes and that side of things, the point I would have to make, and this is one of the places where the, one of the subtle nuances of a muzzle brake and how it's designed. If you have a basically a, just a chamber where you have a port in the middle and you have and you have the the where the or a chamber in the middle and then ports to the side where the drillings or ports or whatever it is but let's say you, ha you end up with a port in the middle what that can actually cause is that same gas that's getting out and coming back in if it can't get out and the majority it can't get out and go away even more of it is coming on to affect the projectile in the inside the chamber of the of the of the muzzle brake so in a design like that, where there tends to be an open chamber in the middle of the, of the um, for a decent amount of length, for the deep, in the middle of a muzzle brake, that can actually, and has been shown to cause inaccuracy in places. When you have a nice, in the opposite side of things, when you have nice, simple, clean baffles, so you have a, a ported chamber, a ported chamber, a ported chamber in whether that's something like this sort of muzzle brake, which is just round and short. Um, it's even something like this Terminator, which they've, they've got the angle back, but they still have individual chambers in between. It's something like my muzzle brake, nice and simple to see, you have individual chambers. What that does is causes the a little bit the opposite effect where it actually, that gas that's trying to get out and go around, it hits a, it hits a wall, it can't get there. 
So by the time the bullet has got to the point where the gas is being released, the tip of the bullet has already gone through the second chamber, then what the, into the second chamber, that means that gas can't get around to the front side of things. There'll be still a little bit, the gas is super fast and doing super special things around there. But largely what the muzzle brake then is doing is it's stripping that air away. So it's giving it a clean path. So that, in that sense, what happens, even with a long boat tail, with a smart design muzzle brake, it is removing that air that's trying to get around in front of the projectile. So, there were, like I said, there's still, there's still a little bit, but that would be, I suppose, ultimately when I come back to my, what I've always found. And that's even on a little rifle, even on 22s, I've seen it where I've been able to run a muzzle brake on the end of a 22 and see a little bit better accuracy. It's not enough to say, oh, it's definitely there. Uh, maybe there's a little bit in my head sort of stuff. Maybe it's a little bit of confidence side of things, but it is the case of I've actually seen a difference where it's just a little more consistent like that. My assumption is that there's, well, I've got another assumption is that maybe something to do with the chambers and things like that. Maybe they do a little bit of helping the resonance of, of harmonics and maybe there's something else going on there. That's a little bit, um, a little bit um, uh, too skeptical to, to really introduce as reality and no way I could really measure it. The, the more likely thing that I feel is happening is that I'm interrupting that gas flow. That gas flow that's trying to get in and push more over the front of the path of the projectile just being released is actually being broken up by the chambers in the likes of my muzzle brake. Um, and there's a lot of other ones. That's not a that's not a sales plug. That's just that I use mine because because I've got them. Um, but that's and I suppose the stuff I've I speak about in that open chamber. I haven't used a lot of muzzle brakes like that, so that is not first-hand experience. But in speaking to a few um, good uh, gunsmiths, they have certainly seen that sort of issue. They've seen guys that are struggling with accuracy when they have a look at things. They found that sort of muzzle brake in place, put a different sort of muzzle brake on it, or just taken the muzzle brake off and found the accuracy come back. No tagging, no nothing wrong, but they've found it has come back. So that's really an upshell of it. Do they cause more accuracy or less accuracy? In my experience, a well-designed one causes better accuracy. I wouldn't say particularly better accuracy than a full-blown target rifle setup shooting a flat base projectile with the target crown and all the rest of it. I don't know if you would see a difference in that flat base because it's not a dealing with that sort of stuff there, but it's not something I shoot in the way I shoot extreme long range, but that's to make some sense of it. Last couple of things I want to note on that sort of stuff is a couple of comments that I have heard um, on occasion. A lot of people um, interpret a muzzle brake as it's a form of brake to try and help with uh, the, the recoil, but they put that assumption of brake into it's going to retard things a little bit. So it's going to make your projectile a little bit slower. It's going to give you a slower muscle velocity. No, it's not. That's not how it works at all. It will, to the largest degree, not affect speed at all. It's not like a compensator or a can or a suppressor where you're actually, in, in some cases, getting a little bit more flow through the fact that they are basically sort of, in, in some terms, causing a little bit of extra um, length on the barrel. Muzzle brakes aren't like that. Muzzle brakes are letting the gas out straight away. They're not causing any increase in pressure or any of that sort of stuff. Nothing else is going on that sort of stuff. Um, in some cases, I have, seen some reading differences, um, not for what I've tested, but what I've seen. What I would suggest is there's two things that are happening in those places, very small changes. But one is that you may be disturbing your, your um, the system they're using, the, the chronograph they're using may be affected by the gas that's coming out the same thing. So a chronograph that was, was getting a little push or a, the gas flow was affecting its vision or whatever it was, that could affect things a little bit. But the simple physics of it is the projectile is, doesn't change it. The gas isn't being restricted around at all. It's being stripped away from it. So it's not going to affect it in any notable form at all. The other side of things that I'd say that there would be a little difference to the muzzle velocity attached to the air rather than the rifle. And that is that on the release of a projectile, a, if, a, if a rifle is moving backwards at that instant by 10 feet per second, 
then that is exactly what's happening with the projectile. It's going to move 10 feet per second slower than if the rifle was lock solid. So that's simply the recoil being taken off the projectile speed. Um, so in that situation, if you had a rifle, a light rifle, it's moving backwards really aggressively, which is just as it's been released. So right that instant, if it's actually moving backwards by 30 feet per second, don't know if that's possible, but if it's actually moving backwards 30 feet per second, then the projectile, the speed from the muzzle would be exactly the same, but the speed in reality in the, attached to the earth, the ground, it would be 30 feet per second slower because the rifle was moving backwards. Um, that's that one. So it means that no, to the largest degree, it doesn't affect it, but that's the, that's the physics of the situation. The other bit of the more, it sounds a bit weirder, but it's another physics of the situation is that fitting a different muzzle brake versus no muzzle brake versus just different weight muzzle brakes and different size muzzle brakes can change your point of impact. This is not about the airflow side of things. Well, if, if the muzzle's moving because of the muzzle brake, okay, it's about the airflow, but it's actually talking about the harmonics. It's actually talking about the fact that whether the exactly where that barrel is in its moment of release through its harmonic process, um, that yes, a muzzle brake by having a different resonant frequency or a different weight or a different blah, 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 all the things, how it affects the, the, the overall mass of the barrel, um, that can affect the point of impact. It won't mean that it's more erratic. It, it, well, it shouldn't. A well-designed one should all work the same, but the weight of it can. You can actually change from one to another and find that, okay, I've got a different point of impact. I've got to adjust by one MOA here or one MOA there. It'll stay at that spot, but yes, that is quite conceivable of changing any muzzle device that you can get a different point of impact <laughs> simply because your barrel is affected by harmonics to one degree or another. Okay, that's about the list of it. I hope that makes some sense. I, I would say in the way of, I sort of skipped over some of the design stuff to a certain degree in there. There is a lot more to muzzle brakes. I have comprehensive videos to go through and explain how this gas is moving and what's going on, all that sort of stuff. But this one was to answer that, you know, accuracy more or less. Um, uh, and it's a case of, mm, how long's a piece of string? <laughs> all about the details in your neck of the woods. Anyway guys, thank you for checking in. Hope you liked. We'll catch you next time.